Please welcome the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne. Hi, George. Hi, how are you? Great to see Great you. Great to see you. Welcome to the show. How are things? Fantastic. Right on. Congratulations Thank on your you. new gig. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. It's exciting. Thank you very much. Yeah. This will be fun. Oh, is Tim Hudak mad that you're wearing all that blue? <laughs> got the red. You got here. the red, right? <laughs> and the shoes. Uh, how's it been so far? A challenge a minute. Yeah. Never a dull moment. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but great. Just, you know, it's a huge honor. And uh, you're talking about politics and how important it is that people care. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I'm in it. So now, one, one would hope we have a super informed electorate. But the truth right. is, people have lots of jobs and lots of lives, and they're yeah. busy people. Yeah. So they don't pay attention to all these little details you're talking about. What they see are headlines. They see, oh, Dalton McGuinty for this long, Liberals for this long. They see gas plants. How much money? A billion? That's yep. sponsorship scandal type money. They start seeing all this stuff. That's what you're up against now, which I'm sure you recognize. What has that been like for you? What's your plan to get people to think that you might be different? Well, so each one of those things I've been dealing with, individually you know um, when you talk about gas plants we have we've changed the rules about how you put those big pieces of energy infrastructure in communities and give communities more uh, more of hands-on uh, contact with those decisions um, in terms of some of the decisions around uh, health spending we've again we've changed the we've changed the culture in those organizations and changed the rules one of the things we're talking about divisions and how voters feel maybe unrepresented is and, it, and, I, and I know there's been lots of jokes in the international space about it we've even made a few but all the jokes come from a place of tears which is what's happening in Toronto and how different the city of Toronto feels they're represented versus the suburbs and as it relates to mayoral politics so we know that for all the jokes about Rob Ford Rob Ford was very popular and based on our system deserved the mayor's office he won a lot of votes this is still the mayor of Toronto can you work with him I can work with I can work with whoever has the, the trust of the council and the people of the city, right? So uh, right now, council... I hear what you're saying. Council decided... <laughs> council decided <laughs> that uh, Deputy Mayor Kelly was the, the person who was the decision maker. Right. It's not for me... It's not for me as the premier to decide uh, who represents council and who right. has the authority. Is it important for you to have a relationship with the mayor, regardless of who it is? Well, it, it, what's important is that... I understand what the needs of the city are and that I'm able to connect with the decision makers mm -hmm. and support those decision makers. That's what's that's what's critical. So that's no and, then. Well, again, council, you know, the mayor's one person. One of the things about this whole last few months, year, has been that um, the, the politics of the city have come down to a discussion about one person. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what it is. The politics of the city are about way more than one person, just like the politics of the province is about way more than one person. When the campaign starts, and it will happen at any day, it could happen whenever, yeah. are you guys going to go, I mean, I, I'm already seeing with the Andrea Horwath ads, how negative is this, are you prepared to go? <laughs> so I don't, I don't like negative uh, advertising, I really don't like it, and so what I've said to people is, we have to contrast, you know, we have to, we have to demonstrate how we're different from the Conservatives and from the NDP, but I... I am not interested in attacking human beings. You know, I'm not in, in, interested in attacking, in, in attacking a personality. Andrea Horvath and Tim Hudak are in this business for good reasons and for their own reasons. And so um, I, can, I can challenge their ideas or their lack of ideas, but I don't want to get into a personal attack. So the Andrea one, which said that, um, you know, too risky. For un too risky in these times. And that was right on that line of... I know. Yep. And that's, yep. So... Well, and that's that's the that's the internal debate. If you want to, you know, a window on internal discussion, mm -hmm. what is that line? When does? Because every politician says they don't like it, but they all say that it ultimately works, and they have to go there. Well, I, I I know you know I've heard lots of politicians say that. I don't think vicious attack does work. I think that it turns people off. And I think one of the reasons that we have a large segment of the population, particularly young people, is that they hear. Uh, a lot of kind of prefabricated back and forth that is is a, sort of um, a personal attacks, and I'm I'm not interested in that. But 
you know, the fact is, I see politics differently. I see our path forward differently than Tim Hudak and Andrea Horvath do. I'm concerned at some of the stuff that Tim Hudak's talking about because I think he's going to pick a fight with labor, with teachers. I think he's going to, he's going to, he's dangerous. I don't know what Andrea Horvath stands for. I think that she's been very unclear on some issues that I would have thought the NDP would have been clear on. Same, so I've heard that about you too, though. People aren't really sure about f well, fully yet where you're at. Well, I, I mean, I think you just look at what I've said about making investments in infrastructure, making sure that we have a strong publicly funded education system, that we have a new vision for education. Like, I, I've been pretty clear about where I think we need to go. I've said I'm not going to cut and slash. I've said we need to make investments. And I've, and I've taken the federal government to task, for example, for not partnering with us on, on making those investments. Did you get a call from a prime minister at the office going, cool it? Does that happen? From the prime minister's office? Yeah. No. <laughs> he could try that, though. Would you, would you take his call? You, you would just, I would always you would take his up. call. That's what you would do. I would always take his call, but uh, no. You know, that, that's, not the, that's not the relationship. It's not a hierarchy between the province and the, the federal government. It's, it's more of a partnership. What's the transition for your family like when you went from being in public life to being the premier? You know, it, it was gradual because I'd been a trustee and then I'd been a, an MPP, then I'd been a minister. Um, and my kids are my kids are grown up, right? They're big and I've got grandchildren. Uh, so the biggest adjustment is for my partner, Jane, yeah. um, because it's just exponential unavailability, right? And that's, that's, really the, that's really what no it is. No matter who you are, right? exactly. that's the thing, right? Exactly, yeah. But I, I, think, that, uh, I think that it's very... How long it's a life that's very Jane? hard. Jane and I have been together for about 22 years. Eh, oh, I a long time. <laughs> exactly. She's seen enough of you. <laughs> <laughs> she gets it too, and she's yeah. she's part of the team. Do you, do you, uh, it's interesting that we. Um, it's not just the uh, the fact that you're unavailable. It's the fact that so much is put on the on the fact that you're the first gay premier of Ontario yeah. or gay premier yeah. and first yeah. female premier of Ontario. So that's that. But as I always say to people, I, I don't know what it's like to be a male premier. So right. fair enough. Right. Right. But <laughs> the fact that for, I don't the know long, how what that's like. for the longest time it was you and your choices and now she's kind of looped into this discussion yeah. just because of the history that's been Yes, made. that's true. No, that's very true. But you know, she is she's well prepared for that. I mean Every, every time we've made a leap, and I say we, um, there's been homophobia that's come up and we've had to deal with it as a, as a couple. And she, to be fair, she was out a long time before I was, you know? And she dealt with, in the corporate, in her corporate life, she dealt with it, in an she era, knew it. In an era where you weren't, there wasn't a lot of that coming no, out, right? Yeah. No, exactly. So she, uh, she shores me up a lot of the time. Do the personal attacks hurt, especially about your sexuality sometimes, and stuff, yeah? Sometimes. But again, I need to know what's out there because if I insulate myself so much, then I, uh, then I get out of touch and I don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, good to see you. Thanks for your thank time Thank you today. very much. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. The Premier of Ontario. Thank you very much. Kathleen Wynn. I'll be right back.